Welcome back, everybody. It's another exhibition match, and man, have these exhibition matches been fun. I'm Christian Harloff, joined, as always, by the one and only. He's cleaned up. He's the baby of the carrots, Mark Ellis. Hey, Christian, you know, uh, it's funny to think back on the seven seasons of the Schmodown. This show started with me going door to door asking my neighbors trivia questions. And now look at where we are. We're having a Lord of the Rings championship match. I have a feeling that this match is going to be the one where you and I mispronounce a record number of names. How do you how do you see this? Oh, there's no doubt about it. I would be surprised if that's not the case. And I'm sure we'll have some. We have a lot of cocky competitors here today, and I can already think of one that will be correcting us as we uh, as we say <laughs> wrong. Um, and it's going to be it's going to be fun. It's going to be good. And we've had a, some great exhibition matches already. So just to let you know, if you're coming in here for the first time, this is the first one you watch and you wanted to watch other ones that have aired. You might want to watch those first because you might get some spoilers um in this one especially maybe there's a particular person who did very well in those other ones and we might talk about that so you've been warned i you know i just noticed you got you got some set of stones on you my man i I just noticed that you changed your name because i made a lord of the rings name and so you just pronounced yourself aragorn well i've seen the movies christian and aragorn has great locks of hair on him yeah but that was before you don't know what happened afterwards. Did he, did he shave his head and start a podcast? That's kind of the whole point. Is that there's a lot there's a lot that went on that I want to continue the story with. Remember, he was he was a lot older than people really realized that he was. Extended he's not a Yankee fan. Time. Well, you don't know that. Uh, all right. Well, we are going to just break down a little bit of what we have here. Yeah. Um, look, I'm gonna I'll, I'll address the elephant in the room. People are gonna ask this question right off the bat. How come Rachel Cushing wasn't in this? Rachel Cushing is busy at the moment. She she was asked absolutely asked. She just she at the at the moment she's she's working at the time that we're scheduling these matches. She's just not able to do it. So of course we invited the Crusher to be a part of it. Um, she just unfortunately wasn't able to do it at this time. It's not to say that whoever wins this might not have to face a crusher down the line but we do have we do have some really solid competitors here today and we got the rookie sensation two rookie sensations going to be in this um match you you start with one you start with one and that's the bandit ben goddard ben goddard has been look he's he's made a presence for himself on sen live um he backed up a lot of his smack talk by winning matches inside of the schmodown both in teams and singles uh got a lot of whether it's you know i always say i I always adhere by the fact that that all publicity is good publicity him and his page uh his partner rachel uh silvestrini got a lot of slack or whatever the infamous we're heels we know about that moment we know the big moment we know the things that he's done in the past but he knows his stuff he knows lord of the rings yeah, Christian, I, it, it's hard to imagine somebody who came in with a, more of a reputation than Ben before you ever played a match because fans were so familiar with him from SCN Live and his own Twitch exploits, and so he comes in, but he backs the talk up. And if you want to talk about people who came into the league with a little bit of fire behind him, enter Robert Parker. Robert Parker, I mean, look, I have been pretty good over the last couple of years here in, in I think it was season five, I said, Ethan Irwin will be Rookie of the Year. In Season 6, I said it would be Smets. I was right on both of those. Well, my predicted this year would be it would be Robert Parker, and that's not taking anything away from Ben Goddard because he has shown up and really great. Parker is an animal. He is really, really good when it comes to his knowledge. And I was one of those people, too, where I said, well, let's see how this kid backs it up because he was on a podcast talking about, well, on the fan leagues, we don't get nervous. And I'm like, well, we'll see how you do under the, under the lights, kid. Well, he didn't do. He didn't get nervous under the lights. He completely destroyed our good pal Ace Andres Cabrera in his first match. Who knows what's to store in his next couple matches? But this guy, he used to be known as the Hobbit for God's sake. So he knows Lord of the Rings. Yeah, and and he carries himself with a, a, a dapper classiness that harkens back to a bygone era, Christian. I mean, the guy, for God's sakes, he's got a pocket watch. So I don't know if he'll be in full suit mode today, but he's certainly going to show up and give his best over the three rounds. I mean, I, I, if you move on and, and you say, look, Lord of the Rings, it's a beloved franchise. Sure it is. I don't know that there's ever been a more beloved or celebrated franchise in Star Wars. And the one dominant force that we've had in Star Wars to this point in the Schmodown is none other than Alex Damon. But now he's going to put his knowledge of Middle Earth to the test. Well, remember, Alex Damon has already in season seven has branched out and started to do uh, other things inside of the Schmodown. 
he is Mike Tyson 86 in Star Wars. We know that. It's it is becoming very very tough for anybody to get close to him. He's the longest reigning Showdown champion we've ever had in any division. Um, and so he wanted to move on. He made his debut against Emily Jacobson in, in, in Atlanta, won the match, right? And then he played in a championship match against Dan Merle, against Kevin Smets, against John Roca, and did very, very well. So, I mean, almost, look, did extremely well and almost won the damn thing. So Lord of the Rings, I feel, is something that he might know better than maybe we think he knows, or maybe he's just here to say, look, I want to run with these guys and see how I do. And now, look, you mentioned that he's the 86 Tyson when it comes to Star Wars. So sticking with the 1986 motif, I would say a 1986, maybe Dwight Gooden, to make both him and his manager happy, would be the person who is currently holding a belt that knows a lot about Lord of the Rings and had to know a lot about Lord of the Rings to get that belt. And that is the guy with the hoodie. He shops at Hot Topic Online. Kevin, the Smasher, Smacks. This is so incredible to watch right now because Kevin Smets is playing on a whole other level right now. And I'm not just talking about inside of the inner geekdom division because he hasn't had a match since he won the title against Mike. But he's been studying. He's been prepping. And this is where the spoiler parts come out. He's already won two exhibition matches. He <laughs> won the championship match against Dan and Roca and Alex Damon. And then he won the Back to the Future. It did, he didn't miss one question. He, did, he went perfect where the guy who wrote the book, Brad Gilmore, did not. So Kevin Smasher, and I'll tell you what, I know Kevin. I know Kevin very well. He does respect and loves his fellow dungeon mate, Robert Parker. He wants to beat his ass today. I can guarantee you that. He wants to beat Robert Parker, and Robert Parker knows it. I can see Robert Parker in the chat room right now. He's pacing back and forth. He looks like a hungry wolf ready to just eat. And, you, you know, you talk about the history that those two share, where there has been some exhibition, I would classify it as conflict between those two. Now they are in the same faction. But you're right, Christian, you throw it all out the window when you put competitors into one little box like what we have here on this streamed episode yeah. of an exhibition match. But I don't think these guys are thinking exhibition. These guys are thinking this might as well be for a belt in their mind. Well, it is for the Lord of the Rings Exhibition Championship, as we say, it is the first one. These are all competitors that uh, have proven their worth. So with that, Mark, we are going to start today's match. Are you ready? Yeah, so so we'll call it Low Trek, which is Lord of the Rings Exhibition Championship. Low Trek. Sure. You got it. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the movie trivia showdown. This is for the Lord of the Rings Exhibition Championship. Introducing first, representing the den, he is Ben, the bandit, Goddard. There he is, Ben. There you are. You are in the office. You got a good uh, Christian Harloff cosplay going right now. How how is everything going for you? It's good. You know, uh, Ben. Uh, it's uh, it's always a fun time to watch these movies, uh, even just for pleasure. But it's been fun studying them. And like you said, going up against three other inner geekdom players, uh, two of them champions, one of them a fan league champion with all the hype in the world. Uh, but you know what? I'm ready to play. And Robert Parker definitely got one of his Lord of the Rings questions wrong against Ace. And I would have challenged in that match, but I wasn't there. So let's get it on. Interesting. Interesting set. I'm sure that he might have some words and to ask you exactly what the hell you're talking about. Absolutely. So we'll stay. And his opponent representing the dungeon. He is Robert the Spider Parker. What's up, Robert? Well, hello. No, I know exactly what Ben's talking about. Uh, he wasn't in the match, so it's not really his business. Uh, but other than that, I'm, I'm here to play. I mean, you said it yourself. These are the best minds at uh, uh, Lord of the Rings that the Shmodan has to offer. And once I go through all of them, I'm hoping that maybe there's a cushion at the end of the road. Interesting. Interesting. All right. So we have the Spider in there who is already cool calm and collected standing with the jacket and everything and yeah, christian is he our first standing competitor that we've had in an exhibition match <laughs> yeah somewhere right now uh bibiani screaming gimmick <laughs> infringement <laughs> and their opponent he is the reigning star wars movie trivia schmodown champion of the world alex the demon Damon! Alex, what's up, my man? Good to see you again. Man, I am so excited for this. Anywhere there's a universe with thousands of years of lore and just unpronounceable names, 
You know I can be there. <laughs> I'm sure. So this is something that you so you hear of the spiders uh, legend. You hear of the the bandits knowledge. Do either one of these guys and look, you've gone up against Smets before. Do you feel that you can you can take these three gents? I do. Wow, interesting. There you go. It's cool, calm, and collected is the the Star Wars champ looking to become the Lord of the Rings champion also. And finally, their opponent. He is the reigning inner geekdom movie trivia schmodown champion of the world, the Smasher, Kevin Smith. Smash. How's it going, everybody? You are becoming a dominant force in these exhibitions. Uh, how you feeling here today? You know, uh, I've told you guys since the beginning, never say no to a challenge. So knowing we have someone that used to be called the, the Hobbit, who wrote all of the Middle Earth questions for the fan leagues, literally, uh, that's something I don't want to shy away from. So, I mean, look, I just went against Roca, Dan Merle, two of the goats. We got the demon who's well on his way to being one of the goats. We got, um, I played against Brad Gilmore who wrote a book on Back to the Future. So, you know, uh, overcoming that, that brings me into, I have Spider. I love you, bro. We've been running drills all week. You're not missing, I'm not missing. So we'll see what happens with the lights on now. And Bandit, good to see you on here. It's gonna be fun to, fun to test metal with all you guys. So I'm excited. Well, with that, we have the bandit. We have the spider, the demon, and the smasher. Seems like a Saturday morning cartoon. I forgot about it. <laughs> all right, Mark, are you ready to tell us the rules around number one? I certainly am, yeah. All four of these guys should get together and have their own cereal. I mean, it's just, <laughs> it's it's incredible to have so much talent into one stream, and that's what we have in front of us. So the rules of round number one, it works like a normal round one for the most part, with the exception that there's six questions in round number one. Now there's six movies in the Lord of the Rings franchise. You can probably guess what each category is. Each question is worth one point. There's no penalty for missing a question. There is no stealing in round number one. If you get all six questions correctly, it's a perfect round, which we'll probably have a few of here today. If you get a perfect round, you are asked a bonus question that is also worth one point. No penalty for missing that one as well. Each competitor has three usages of the JTE rule throughout the duration of the three round match. If you're not sure you heard a question, you wanna buy yourself more time, use a JTE rule. You also each have one challenge to be used at any point throughout the three round match because Ben is actually here today. He can use that challenge whenever he wants to. Christian, <laughs> let's get it on. All right, well said, well said. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so with that, I ask, the Smasher, are you ready? I'm ready. Demon, are you ready? I'm ready. Spider. This day we fight, let's go. And the bandit. Uh, death. <laughs> I was going to say that. That's good. Let's get ready <laughs> to Schmodown. All right, guys. Here we go. Here we go. Lord of the Rings Championship. Six questions. In Fellowship of the Ring. That is the question. That is the first topic. Fellowship of the Ring. At the beginning of the Fellowship of the Ring, which birthday is Bilbo Baggins celebrating? All right, Christian. Big shout out to our writers, too, who really cobbled this match together kind of last second. So thanks to everybody who worked hard on this behind the scenes. Absolutely. They're working really hard on it. Five, four, three, two, one. We start with the Smasher. Shout out to Brianne. That's her eraser, and I'm wearing her socks. The 111th birthday. That is correct. Alex Damon. 111st or 111th. That is correct. Spider. 111th. Yes, and Ben Goddard. Uh, 111. All right, so here we go, guys. We have Can I get now. A, one second. I have a new thing of markers. I'm going to grab it real quick. Sorry, Christian. I thought Fine. that one was dry. Challenge, challenge. There might be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is. This, this, this is my uh, quick quill. quotes quill. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. Sorry, wrong, wrong franchise. Wrong franchise. <laughs> All right, we uh, we all good to go. Then we will continue with your second question in round number one, and that is from the film The Desolation of Smaug. Smaug. And the question, who voices the character of Smaug? Uh, Christian, did I hear Smets correctly where he said he's wearing a pair of Brienne socks? Is that true? That's sure. It has her face on it. Long story. Ah, oh. uh, <laughs> I thought you just like... I've worn, them, I've worn them my three exhibition matches. Four, so three, please. Two, one. Pens down, please. And Alex Damon. Benedict Cumberbatch. Yes. Robert Parker. Benedict Cumberbatch. Ben Goddard. Benedict Cumberbatch. And Socks. <laughs> Benedict Cumberbatch. 
All right, so we're all tied up here at two, everybody. Two right now. You have Kevin Smets with two. Uh, and everyone else says two at the moment. All right, next question, everybody. Number three is from an unexpected journey. What does Gandalf do to alert the dwarves where Bilbo lives in an unexpected journey? Uh, little wizard behind the curtain here, Christian. It's true that we would have kicked any of the competitors out if they missed question number two in round number one. We just would have dropped them from the stream entirely. That's right. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, and we start with the spider. He puts a mark on the door. That is correct. Ben Goddard. Leaves a mark on his door. Yes, Smets. Use his staff to mark the door. He uses a mark on the door. Fine. And Demon. Carves a rune onto the front door. That's fine. All right. So now we have three apiece, Mark. Three apiece as we get to question number four. <laughs> they all answered it differently, but they're all still correct. These, I mean, <laughs> the, the nerdery is A plus so far. And just we'll see if it continues with your next category. Behind which is the, the curtain there, Mark. Just get a little behind the curtain. I already texted our writers and I said, be prepared. This might go to sudden death. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we, 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 we might need uh, to text some of the competitors to just take a dive so we can get out of this thing on time. Yeah. <laughs> Your next category is in Return of the King. And the question is, what is the name of the hobbit who is with Smeagol at the beginning of Return of the King? Oh, oh very interesting. See if that trips people up. We, you know what, Christian? We should just make up questions that don't exist in the movies just to fool these guys. <laughs> Name the horse that rides the spirit at the beginning of Battle of the Five Armies. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, and we start with Ben Goddard. Deagle. Yes, that is right. Smets. Deagle. Yes. Alex. Deagle. And Robert Parker. What's that tickle in my love? Ooh, that was good. That was really good. His name is Robert Parker. All right, so now <laughs> we're going to get to question number five, everybody. Number five. Number five out of six with a potential bonus. Five. Battle of the Five Armies. Who plays Dane to Ironfoot in the Battle of Five Armies? Uh, Christian, trivia question for you. Name another movie that features a character named Deagle. Uh, Gremlins. Very deagle deagle. She yep. <laughs> I shoot her out the window. Oh, it's so good. Five, four, three, two, one, and smash. Billy Connolly. Yes, it is. And demon. Billy Connolly. Spider. Billy Connolly. And bandit. Some of the worst CGI. Billy Connolly. That is absolutely right. All right, you guys. So here's where we stand right now. This is your sixth question in round number one. At the end of this one, I'm pretty sure all of you are going to be answering a bonus question. So <laughs> be ready for that. Here is your fifth question. Uh, this comes from Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers. And the query is, what does Gimli ask Aragorn to do but promise not to tell the elf about in The Two Towers? Love this one. Christian, have you gotten any of these questions? I got the Benedict Cumberbatch one, and that's it. I would have had. No, I'm lying. I would have gotten one. <laughs> and five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, please. And we start with Alex Demon. Toss me. Yes. And Spider. You'll have to toss me. <laughs> yep. And Ben. Toss him. And Smash. Toss them. Okay, so they all have a perfect well, perfect round thus far, and now they're all going to get a bonus mark. So the way it works is that you all have to write it down because you all got it. So you're all <laughs> going to write it down the same exact way. Write down the answer the same way you have been for the previous questions. If you're all ready, here comes the bonus. Here it is. In Fellowship of the Ring, Gandalf calls Pippin what insulting term after Pippin accidentally makes noise in the mines of Moria. They're all writing it down like they know the answer, and it's... <laughs> I didn't even understand the question. <laughs> <laughs> and five, four, three, two, 
one, and we start now with Robert Parker. Fool of a Took, throw yourself next in next time and rid us of your stupidity. Yes. Uh, the Bandit. Fool of a Took, took the entire S quote from me. Smash. <laughs> I don't condone bowling, but it's Fool of a Took. Yes, and Demon. Fool of a Took. So everybody here, seven points. And we might as well start it with zero. Just, just it turn is. it off. Just you, you all get the belt. We're done. <laughs> I already told. I'm telling you, we're, uh, I am. I am really concerned about the amount of questions. Uh, as we, uh, <laughs> what I'm going to also try to do is, Mark. There's a very good possibility. Should we not have um, questions at the end? That we're going to have to tear into the actual document of the Lord of the Rings. So that's something to be prepared for. Yeah. Um, <laughs> or we just, you know, let everybody have the win and enjoy it. But um, we'll figure something out. In the meantime, let's move on to round number two. And the rules of round number two are as follows. There is a wheel that is lurking inside my head. So the way you spin it is you just give me a number from one to ten. There's no spinners or opponents choice today. I will give you the categories that you might be spinning before the first spinner decides to use that. Now. What you have is if you spin a category and you don't like it, you can ask me for a respin. You get one each. And then once we settle on a category, you get four questions. Each question is worth two points. No penalty for missing a question. There is no stealing. Ah, there is. You can steal. And maybe that's how we avoid sudden death overtime. Stealing is available in round at number two. So if I ask you a question, you're not sure the answer, ask me for multiple choice. I'll give you four options, one of which is the correct answer. At that point, the value of the question goes down to one. So... I am looking at the leaderboard, Christian. I see sevens all around. So who go in you order in two first. I would go in order of how we announced them. So we start with with Kevin Smets. You can either go first or defer. I have to go first. Let's you do go it. first. All right, yeah. Kevin, you go first. Okay, Kevin. I'm going to give you um, just so you know what you're looking at as far as the wheel is concerned. This is yeah. not any particular order, but the wheel slices are the six movies in the franchise. We also have um, Lord of the Rings, 1978. We also have heroes, villains, and who said it, which is the quotes. Okay. Uh, I'll start with number seven. All right. You have spun the two towers. I love that movie. Let's go. Let's do two towers. All right. Two towers it is. Christian, I'm going to you uh, ask like he's going to miss I anything. Can, I can ask. I can ask. All right, Kevin, are you ready? Yeah. All right, the two towers. In the two towers, Sam states, no one at home will ever believe this after spying what creature which he assumed was mythical. Oliphants. For two points, Kevin Smith. I, I mean, I would have gone with Comic Kill, <laughs> but whatever. What did we say, Mark? I'm sorry, four questions? Four questions, yeah. All right, question number two. Sam reveals to Faramir that Boromir trying to take the ring while he and Faramir are in what city? Osgiliath. Two more points. Two more points. All right. Kevin Smets hasn't missed a question in a long time. All right. <laughs> what is the name of Aomir's father? Aomund. Yes, it is. All right. Fourth and final question. In the two towers, when Mary is reminding Pippin of old stories of trees coming alive, what forest from the Shire did he reference? I can't give these guys a steal. I think I know it. I'm going to go multiple choice. Is it A, Brandywine Forest, B, Buckland Forest, C, West March Forest or D, the Old Forest? Buckland. For one point. All right. I should have Kevin. said that. That was on my head. Um, it, I'm kind of with you on this one, I Parker. It, it's the Old Forest on the borders of Buckland. It's not Buckland yeah. Forest. Yeah. I'll throw I my was challenge gonna out there. I was thinking of challenge that as well. It's the, old, it's the Old Forest on the borders of Buckland. <laughs> but if it's on the... It's, but it's still on the Buckland Forest. We're, we're, this is we're, we're this is sorry. Okay. This exhibition okay. match. No, we're not playing into okay. it. That's, yeah. Come give on, Parker. Writers, this is this is give the writers a break more than it is even. <laughs> yeah. I I think we we, we probably would have ruled it that way in a real match anyway that it's on the border, but it still yeah. counts as Buckland Forest. Yeah, so. yeah, because it's still on the border. That's fair. All right. So yep. 
That's fine. Okay, so Kevin Smith now sees himself. He did, though. Even though, Mark, he, it, he got everything right. It, it's still, a mortal wound. He, it, it, he, <laughs> he might as well leave. He, it's risky. It, is, it was a risky move to go to multiple choice because <laughs> the gents here have a shot. So now we get to Alex Damon. Alex, would you like to go or would you like to defer? I'm going to go. You're going to go? Okay. How many uh, topics are left on the wheel? Nine. So but what I still needed to do, because I switch up the, the order of everything. Oh, so I just wanted to know so I knew points. which multi-sided dice to use. <laughs> In true uh, nerd uh, fashion, two. You spun two, which means that you spun Lord of the Rings 1978. And <laughs> three. All right. <laughs> you have spun who said it, which is the quotable category. Okay. All right, Alex, I'll be asking you your questions. I did catch you playing a little bit of D&D the other night on your stream. Congratulations. Um, and your question, first one of four for two points. Which character said, no, I will not die like this, cowering, clawing for breath? Quotes. Five, four, three. Repeat. Can do that. Which character said, No, I will not die like this, cowering, clawing for breath? Thorin. Two points. Two points. Big pull there by the Star Wars champ. All right. Mm -hmm. Next question. All right. Alex, for two more points. Which of the dwarves in Thorin's company said, Flash of light, searing pain, then poof, you're nothing more than a pile of ash? Bofer. That is correct. All right, so now we have Alex Damon, who pulls up with 11 points, trying to get one behind here on uh, on Smets, if he gets this next two points. All right, your penultimate question in quotes in the World of Lord of the Rings. In the two towers, Sam and Smeagol discuss food while Sam cooks rabbits. How does Smeagol say he prefers his fish? Raw and wriggling. Very gross. <laughs> Very accurate. Uh, <laughs> all right. So I just say it like that, too. <laughs> so now Alex Damien, should he hit a two pointer, he will jump ahead of Kevin Smets. But if he goes to multiple choice, he'll tie it. Or if he misses, he's going to be in big trouble. <laughs> he's waiting to trounce. All right. Here we go. All right. One more question for you, Alex, in round two that I'll be uttering into my disco ball. And that is. Finish the quote. In Return of the King, when Sam attacks the orcs in Sirith Ungol, he cries, and that's for my old what? Gaffer. Yes, it is. So now Alex Damon takes the lead. He is now one ahead of Kevin Smets. It is 15, 14, and now Robert Parker has the opportunity to go or he can defer to the bandit. I'm going to defer. You're going to defer. All right. So now Ben... Goddard will be going here. Ben, please choose a number. Uh, is it still between 1 and 12 or? 1 and 10, please. 1 and 10, sorry. Um, I'll pick 7. You pick 7, which means you spun Middle Earth locations. Ooh. Excuse I'll me. Try. Sorry, sorry. I, I was reading from a different uh, round. You spun 7, which means you spun Battle of the Five Armies. Battle of the Five Armies, OK. You confused me there, Mark. That's, I was going to say, I don't remember hearing that. That look, is the options. I'm casting spells like Boromir. Yeah. Category 13, uh, shows Carrot Top Performances in Vegas. <laughs> which I've been I'll to, the that. MGM Grand. Um, you know what? I'll stick with it. Battle of the Five Armies it is. All right. Ben Goddard, you got four questions in Battle of the Five Armies. Are you ready? Yeah, let's do it. All right. What happens to Bilbo before going into battle at the end of the film? What happens to Bilbo before going into battle at the end of the film? That's so vague. Five, four, three, two. Repeat. What happens to Bilbo right before going into battle at the end of the film. He 
He gets Five. knocked unconscious. That's correct for two points. So nice vague goal. or not, got it. So you hope you should hope to get another vague question. You got it right. I know. Yeah. What? <laughs> what giant creature emerges from the ground, freeing Azog's army in Battle of the Five Armies? Uh, the Wereworms. Yes, for two more points. Is that like werewolves except they're worms? <laughs> <laughs> Assume so. All right. It's only. Question three. What location does Smaug set on fire in the opening scenes of The Hobbit Battle of the Five Armies? Lake Town. Two more points. All right. So, Ben, in order to tie Alex Damon, you got to answer this question right for a two pointer, or you can tie Smets with multiple choice. Here you go. In the Battle of the Five Armies, what causes Thorin? To become enraged and nearly kill Bilbo before the big battle. Uh, Bilbo gives uh, Bard uh, the Arkenstone. That is correct. All right. So Ben Goddard also not missing a question. Here is the score. Kevin Smets, 14. Alex Damon, 15. Robert Parker with 7. And Ben Goddard, 15. So Robert Parker is now on the board here. Here we go. Mark, Robert, what do you got? Uh, one through nine now, yes? Uh, no, it's it's still one through ten because the, I switch up the order. Oh, sorry. Time. Okay. Yep. Gotcha. All right, let's go four. All right, you said four, which means that you have spun yep. Lord of the Rings 1978. <laughs> I mean, I watched it, but I'm better. <laughs> I'll so hold. let's go to... Uh, let's go to eight. Eight. You have spun the Desolation of Smaug. Smaugging it up. Smaug weed every day. <laughs> Christian. We could, all, we could all do a bright bathroom break right now. He's going to get these. <laughs> yeah. I don't know that, that you've ever had a more dad line than like a dad walking in and their kid is watching Lord of the Rings and say, hey, you kid's smaugging it up. <laughs> <laughs> it reminded me It reminded me of, uh, of what's his face? Uh, Rob Schneider and that, that paper, the, the copy guy thing. Smaugging it up. Smaugarino. <laughs> Smaugarino. Leslie, watching the Smaugarinator. <laughs> All right, here we go. Parker's up. All right, Robert. Your question in Desolation of Smaug. Drag on your question. First of four is, for two points, the movie begins with the party being pursued by Azog and the orcs. Bilbo soon notices another animal tracking the party. What kind of animal is it? A great black bear. Yes, it is. Robert Parker now gets himself within, uh, well, he's got nine points. So can he go perfect and then really putting the pressure on the smasher? All right, Robert. You got three more questions to do just that before we move into round number three. Your next question. Legolas tells Tariel that she can not hunt how many orcs on her own? 30. That's a old errand to even hunt one orc, in my opinion. And that is correct. All right. You're halfway through your penultimate question in the world of desolation of Smaug. Bilbo begins to understand the dark power the ring has over him when he brutally kills what type of creature to retrieve it? A baby spider. Just like you. <laughs> hey. <laughs> All right, that's two more points, Robert, and you are two away from sharing the lead going into round number three. And your last question. How many Oscars was Desolation of Smaug nominated for? You don't need to tell me what the categories are, just need the number three. of Oscars. What's that? Three. Wow. Three. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. All right, so look at this. What Kevin Smets is pitching a perfect game. However, he needs <laughs> multiple choice, and he finds himself down one. Kevin Smets, 14. Everybody else with a big 15, they have not missed a question mark. This is incredible as we get into the final round here. Well, it's not the final round, but it's supposed to be the final round. <laughs> three, what do you think? We will see what happens in round number three because, look, it, once you get to your three- and five-point questions, those – are among the toughest ones that we ask in any match. So we'll see what the future holds for each one of these four very talented Lord of the Rings fan individuals. In round number three, I'm going to need a series of numbers from each of you. These numbers can range from one 
to 12. Each one of you gives me three numbers within one to 12. Each number corresponds to a different corner of Lord of the Rings know-how. Your first question is worth two points. Your next one's worth three points. The last one is worth five points. And I think we will get there. So what we need is each one of you to give me those numbers now, starting with the leader. And judging by the way we introduced everyone, that would be, is that Alex Damon, Christian? That would be Damon, yeah. All right. What do you got for me, Alex? What are your lucky three numbers from one to I 12? I will take three, seven, and nine. Three, seven, and nine. And now we get to Parker. All right. Uh, I will do uh, eight, one, and four. Eight, one, and four. Ben Goddard. Uh, I'll do ten, two, and five. Ten, two, and five. And then finally, Smets. I have decided that I will do six, eleven, and twelve. Please, those are my choices. That makes sense. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, so Kevin, you're gonna because strangely enough, you are uh, not winning at the moment. Uh, you are going to start with category number six for two points. And here we go. Category number six. Creatures. Creatures is what I have. Um, all right, hold on. Sorry, guys. Six is creatures. Okay. In the two towers, on the way to Helm's Deep, the refugees were attacked by orcs riding what? Wargs. Yes, for two That's right. Yeah, I'm in the lead again. You're in the lead. For how Forever. long? We don't know. All right. They're going to so, miss him. Well, Alex Damon. Excuse me, Alex Damon. But now, um, now Ben Goddard will go. So, Mark, uh, Ben chose Category 10. He did, Christian, and that corresponds to his two-point question, which is actors and actresses. Oh! <laughs> well, if you don't like it, it's, it's a good thing it's your two-pointer. Yeah. And that question. In which of the Hobbit films do we get a cameo from Elijah Wood as Frodo? An Unexpected Journey. Correct, for two points. Yes, right. so glad that was my two-pointer. <laughs> ben Goddard now finds himself in the lead as we now jump on over to Robert Parker. Robert Parker chose category number eight, and that heroes. Heroes. Robert. Okay, Robert, here we go. Category eight. Who is the first of the Fellowship to volunteer to accompany Frodo in Fellowship of the Ring? Gandalf. Correct for two more points here. Robert Parker now has 17. And now finally, Alex Damon. Alex Damon will now get his two pointer mark, and that was three. Category three. That's right, Christian. That corresponds to Middle Earth locations. Alex, how do you feel about that one? Fine. All right. For two points, in Lord of the Rings, the two towers, name one of the two locations where the titular towers were located. Isengard. You said Isengard? Mm -hmm. That is correct for two points. All right. So Alex Damon now has 17. So now we go to Kevin Smets, who needs to hit his three pointer. Kevin, you chose category 11. Category 11, Kevin, was weapons and items. Weapons and items. Okay. Here we go. What? What is the elven name? Or Kingsfoil, the weed that Aragorn sends Sam to find to help treat Frodo's wound. Athelas. Yes. So it's three points. Kevin Smets now. 19 points. And now, now we get to Ben Goddard. Ben Goddard chose category number two, Mark. That's right, Christian. He chose number two. And interesting to note, Kevin Smets is up 19 to 17, which is the same score that UCLA won in Back to the Future 2. <laughs> yes, that's, that's true. Kevin won, yeah. All right. Um, let's see. Ben, for number 10, uh, excuse me, 10 was your two point, two was your three point question. And your three pointer corresponds to Return of the King. Hopefully, that's better than actors and actresses for you. And your I just question is: I know I'm getting a 78 for my five pointer. I know I'm getting the 78 for my five pointer. <laughs> um, what is the name of the path that leads to Shelob's lair in Return of the King? Kirith Ungol. Duh. 
<laughs> All right. So Ben Goddard now takes the lead with yep. 20. But Robert Parker, right on his heels here, has to get this three-pointer to give himself 20 points. Oops. Sorry. Hold on a second, guys. Sorry, Robert. You chose category number one, Robert. Category number one. You chose the two towers. All right. Here you go, Robert. What is the name of the capital city of Rohan? Edoras. Yes, it is. And this is getting scary. All right. <laughs> so now we have Robert Parker with 20. Ben Goddard with 20. Alex Damon now has a chance to tie it. With That's right, Kirsten. He, he chose number seven, and that corresponds to the desolation of Smaug for your three-point question. And that query is to tie the lead in the desolation of Smaug, which dwarf becomes gravely ill after an orc shoots him with a poisoned arrow? Keely. We are tied at the top. It's a three-way tie. 20, 20, 20. And Kevin Smith right there at 19 points, Christian. Yeah, this is the, this is the crazy thing, though, right now. Kev, Kevin Smets has category number 12. Category number 12 is Fellowship of the Ring. Now, if Kevin hits this, if Kevin hits this, he's in the lead. If he misses it, because he's down one point to everyone else, he is eliminated. So Kevin, in order to take the lead and then hope somebody else misses, <laughs> Hope they all miss. Yeah. Here is here is the final question. You got category twelve, Fellowship of the Ring. Before Merry, Pippin and Sam interrupt the Council of Elrond. How many total attendees are there at the secret meeting? Are we talking ex extras too? Oh, geez. Um, before, sorry, repeat the question. First one, before Mary, Pippin, <laughs> Pippin and Sam interrupt the Council of Elrond. How many total attendees are there at the secret meeting? <laughs> Five. Nineteen. And with that, <laughs> Kevin Smets has been eliminated no. in 20. Oh, oh wait! I thought there oh. were twenty-two seats. Oh, I'm wrong. Well, I was gonna miss out on the overtime anyway. That's a, that's well, a <laughs> wow. So the first time he's human, folks. All right, wow. Kevin. Wow. For now, so this is it. This is what we have right now. It's a battle. Can I, yeah. can I just live in this moment that I actually beat Smets at movie trivia? I think this will ha only happen once in my life. So give me just two seconds. <laughs> sure. Absolutely. Well, I mean, look, you, you're also now you're also competing with the Star Wars champ. And the rookie sensation of the spider. Yep. Can you do it? We're going to find out really, really soon here because, my here friends, comes. you are up with your five-pointer. Here it comes. Mark. Yeah, he chose, he chose category five, Mark. That's right, and that corresponds, Ben, to the world of villains. Okay. And your question for five points and the lead for now to secure yourself at least a slot in sudden death should we go that far. Actor Lawrence McCor played three different villains in the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Name two of the characters he played. And I'm going to give you the spelling on the last name. It's M-A-K-O-A-R-E. Makor is how I pronounced it. 15 seconds starting now. Five. Four. Three. Repeat, please. First one. Actor Lawrence McCor played three different villains in the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Name two of the characters he played. Five. Four. Repeat, please. Second one. Actor Lawrence McCor played three different villains in the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Name two of the characters he played. I'll go with... Uh, Five, four. Lurts and Sauron. And with that, Ben Goddard has Thanks. been eliminated, looking for either Lurts, the Eucharist, Witch King, and Gothmog, the Orc, in Return of the King. 
All right, so Ben Goddard. Ben Goddard, hell of a hell of a appearance there, Ben. Gotta gotta let you go there. Well, no, he's he's still in it. Oh no, you're right. He's he still, still alive. You are still in it. That's right. I'm sorry. You're not eliminated yet. You gotta no, wait. Until, if one of your if one of your opponents, that's right. Hold on. So because Ben Goddard missed, he's still in it because it's tied. However, Robert Parker is on the board. If Robert Parker hits his five pointer, then Ben Goddard is eliminated. If he doesn't, well, then Alex Damon could win the whole thing and hit his five. But we're going to find out right now because Robert Listen. Parker, Robert Parker chose category number four. All right, Robert, you chose category number four. An unexpected journey. Unexpected journey is your right. category. Here you go. All right. What is Gollum's three word incorrect final answer? To Bilbo's riddle, what have I got in my pocket? Uh, Hans's knife, and then his last guess is two ones, and he goes string or nothing. We would have just accepted string or nothing, but yes, string or nothing is correct. So absolutely, Robert Parker has hit his five pointer, and with that, your game, y'all, has <laughs> okay. been eliminated. All right, yeah, so. Where we see each other, where we see the score right now, Mark, it's very, 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 very interesting indeed because Robert Parker has 25 points. He's not missed a point, a question this entire thing, but neither is Alex Damon. If Alex Damon hits it, we go to sudden death. But if he misses, well, then Robert Parker is the Lord of the Rings champion in this exhibition match. All right. Mark, please ask away. Mr. Damon. We're far, far away from Star Wars, but we're neck deep in Middle Earth. And your question for five points to tie the spider is in the Battle of the Five Armies. And your question. Who kills the leader of the orc armies? This feels like a trick question. Five. Four, three, two. Repeat. First one. Who? My second kills, one. The second who, one. <laughs> who kills the leader of the orc armies? Thorin. And We're going to sudden going death. A sudden death. <laughs> <laughs> I felt that was an easy <sighs> five pointer. I'm just going to say. <laughs> We're going to sudden death. We're going to sudden death. So, ladies and gentlemen, Alex Damon, Robert Parker are going to sudden death. Alex Damon, the Star Wars champion, Robert Parker, and the new kid on the block. And here we go, Mark. How does sudden death work, my friend? Sudden death is going to feel a lot like round number one, except the stakes have increased dramatically. Either Christian or myself will ask a question. Each question is worth one point. There's no penalty for missing a question. There is no stealing in sudden death. Simply answer as best you can by writing down your best attempt at an answer on whatever tablet you're using with whatever writing instrument you prefer. And when we ask you by name to reveal your answer, please show what you wrote at the same time you verbalize your answer into the microphone. That's exactly like round number one. Here's where it gets different. This is sudden death. So if both competitors miss the question, we move on. If both competitors get the question correct, we move on. But if one competitor gets the correct answer and the other does not, the correct answerer is the champion of this Lord of the Rings exhibition match. We have the demon and the spider. It is 25-25 as we get into this final round here, we think. Um, all right. So let's start with, with question number one. Here we go. Who drives the spirit of Sauron and Nazgul from High Fells of Rudar after Gandalf is rescued in the Battle of Five Armies. I am no idea if I said any of that right. I think you did okay. I was worried. Well, that was, that was I, I, actually, I actually thought you were going to see the question and then be like, all right, Mark, you're up. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. We start with Alex Damon. Galadriel. And Robert. Galadriel. Both correct. All right, 26 apiece. Excuse me for a second here. 26. All right, next question, Mark. 
All right, gentlemen, what is the name of the field between Minas Tirith and Osgiliath, where a major battle takes place in Return of the King? Let's see if that one stumps him, Christian. I don't want to root against either one of these guys. I like him so much. Yeah. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. Start with uh, Parker. Pelinor Fields. And Alex? Pelinor. Pelinor works. Okay. So 27, 27. Next question here, guys. Here it is. Mount Doom is located within which realm of Middle-earth? Just gonna go ahead and give them both a point right now. Do you think Tolkien got a little lazy with Mount Doom? Maybe. Five. <laughs> Maybe it's before it was hip. Four, <laughs> three, two, one. Start with Alex Damon. It's where the shadows lie, Mordor. And Parker? Mordor. Yes. Okay, so if you get, we're not gonna get we're not gonna let you guys know if you're correct until both of you have answered just to just to let you know. Yeah, All right. right, next question, Mark. You're gonna have to get into Led Zeppelin Lord of the Rings themed songs here very soon. <laughs> uh your next question. What is the name of the white horse Gandalf rides throughout the Lord of the Rings trilogy? Christian, one gets the feeling we're just giving them free throw practice. Yeah, I know. And it's not the writer's fault either. It's just these guys are really good. Oh. Five, four, three, two, one. Parker? Shadow facts. Damon? Shadow facts. Both correct. All right, 29, 29, 29. Who will fall first? Mark, we're going to be here for a long time. Right, Mark, my, uh, you're going to have to ask the next one, my computer. Oh, oh. sure it did. All right. Your next question. I actually believe it's not that hard to pronounce these names. Gentlemen, for one point and to continue the match, from the Hobbit trilogy, name the two towns located near the Lonely Mountain. Need both of those. All right. Counting you down here in five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, going to you first, Spider. Dale and Lake Town. And Alex? Dale and Lake Town. They got them both, Christian. All right. All right, so after that, it is 30 to 30. Alex Damon, Robert Parker, neck and neck. Mark, next one. Your next question. What illness does Balin tell Bilbo Thorin is suffering from in the Battle of the Five Armies? We're going to have to have uh, Tolkien come back and ask some new questions here. I, I don't think Tolkien would, would have gotten 30 points at this point. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. Alex Damon. Dragon sickness. And Parker. It's a fierce and jealous love, dragon sickness. 31 points. 31 points it is. All right. Um, all right, Mark, 31, 31. I can, I have access here. Hold on a second. All right, guys, here's the next one. What does Bilbo take from Bayorn's home to bring back to the Shire so he can remember his adventures? Both have written their answers, and I feel that they are not stumped by this one either. <laughs> and five, four, three. Two, one, pens down. Alex Damon. An acorn. And Robert? An acorn. Correct. 32 points. 32 points, Mark. All right, here we go, guys. So, here we go. In what year was Ralph Baskin's Lord of the Rings released in theaters? I know this one. You do? <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't Four, know the other 31 or 32, but... Three, <laughs> two, one. Pens down, please. And Robert Parker? 1978. And Alex Damon? 1978. Yes. How, what's the score right now? 
<laughs> it's I believe it's 32 to 32. Oh, I had 32. 33, I think. 33, 33. All right, yeah. Mark. Okay. You want me to ask the next one? No, I got it. All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, your next question. What is the name of the horn that Gimli blows as the riders meet the Uruke at the Battle of Helm's Deep? Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down and Parker. The Horn of Helm Hammerhand. And Damon. The Horn of Helm Hammerhand. 34 points. And Mark, if you have to, Mark Ellis, for everybody who doesn't know, Mark has to host another match at the end of this. So he might jump off if this goes too long. Uh, I will ask the next question here. Here we go. Have at it. In the Fellowship of the Ring, spies of Saruman that look like black crows are spying on the Fellowship. Where does Legolas say they are from? Again, Christian, you hate rooting against either one of these fellows. You know, I, if we could, we'd be here all day because it's an amazing display of knowledge. Four, three, two, one. Alex? Dunland. Parker? Dunland. 35. Yeah. 35. Your next question. Who plays the elf Lindir in An Unexpected Journey? I hope both these guys got straight A's in school, Christian, because if they didn't, they should have studied harder at that. All right. Suppose the Lord of the Ring. Five, four, three, two, one hands down and Alex Damon, Brett McKenzie, and Damon. I mean, excuse me, Parker. Brett McKenzie. Yeah. There you go. All right. So now we see ourselves with thirty-six points. Thirty-six points. Here's the next question. What actor provided the voice of Legolas? in the 1978 theatrically released animated version of Lord of the Rings. Woo! You know, you gave him a layup with what year did it come out, but now the real Christian Harloff is showing himself. Yeah, well, I forgot that's what the category was called originally. <laughs> Five, <laughs> four, three. <laughs> you asked it so confidently. I know. Two. This is the one that's going to get him. One, points, da points down, pens down, and Damon. C-3PO himself, Anthony Daniels. And Parker... <laughs> Anthony Daniels. Damn. 37, 37. Hmm. 37, 37. Mark? All right. Your next question. During the Battle of Helm's Deep, when Gimli and Legolas first start keeping track of their kills, Gimli is at two. What number is Legolas at? Mm -mm -mm. Five. Four. Three. Two, one, and Parker. 17. Alex. 17. Find ourselves at 38. 38 points. Okay. Next one. Here we go. According to the prologue in Fellowship of the Ring, how many years did Gollum have the one ring until Bilbo took it? If it makes you feel any better, Christian, all these questions would stump me. <laughs> and five, four, three, two, one. Damon? 500. And Parker? 500. 39, 39. We have, as we get to our next question mark. <laughs> all right. Gentlemen, I need you to provide the first and last names of Frodo's three Hobbit companions in the Fellowship of the Ring. So we'll give you a little bit more time than 15 seconds because we need you to write down the first and last, all three of the companions. Five. Four. Three. Two. Repeat. <laughs> These uh, are right. long names, man. They are long names. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> Provide <laughs> the first and last name of Frodo's three Hobbit companions in Fellowship of the Ring. That's Alex Damon's one and only uh, repeat in Sudden Death. Parker has one also. All right. And five, four, three, two, one. We start with Alex Damon. Samwise Gamgee, Peregrine Took, and Mary Adok Brandybuck. And Robert Parker. Samwise Gamgee, Mary Adok Brandybuck, and Peregrine Took. 40 it is. 40, 40. All right. Here we go. What were the colors of the three banners directly behind Theoden's throne in Adorus? Christian, I think these guys know more about Lord of the Rings than I know about all the things that I know combined. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure. Yeah, this, is, uh, this is not easy. It's amazing. Yeah. Yes. Five, four, three, two, one. Start Robert Parker. Red, blue, and green. And Alex Damon. This could be it. Green, red, and gold. It was red, black, and blue. Neither had it. <laughs> oh. Oh. Neither had it. So we go <laughs> We go to the next one. You blew it, Christian. Just lie. <laughs> lie. <laughs> I finally missed. Uh, oh, right. man. Next uh. one. Hey, you know what? This is why they play the games. Okay. We're back. And now that we know that you gentlemen are mortal, I have a pep in my step. <laughs> Your next question is going to be another long one. So we're going to give you plenty of time to write down your answer. What are three things Bilbo claims to be during his conversation with Smaug? So, Christian, I'd give him 25 seconds. All right. Doesn't look like they need it, though. <laughs> Every time we ask a question, we're like, we got him here. This is a crazy match. <laughs> Parker's got to, though, Parker knows his stuff, but he's got to be giving some props to the Star Wars champ here. Five. Yeah, really? Oh, 100%. Four. Absolutely. Three. Then I'll bib stands this long. One. Hands down. We start with <laughs> Alex. This might be it. Barrel Rider, Riddle Maker, and Underhill. And Parker? Barrel Rider, Little. Riddle maker and luck wearer. And your winner, ladies and gentlemen, he's done it. The Spider, Robert Parker. Wow, Mark, it was a strap, but my God, it finally, someone finally fell. It was just they were throwing haymakers at each other. Damon to put his chin out there just for a second. Parker capitalized, but wow, what a match. All right, I'm going to just drop Damon for a second. I'll bring back everybody else. But Robert, look at you, man. You, you did it. You, you've talked about it. You've only met, you only missed one question, but fortunately enough for you, Damon also missed it. Yeah. You find yourself winning your first exhibition match here, too. You're flawless in both in both the, the professional league, the fan league, and now an exhibition. How'd you feel going that, that match? I... I felt great. You got to get the hats off to, I mean, not just Damon, but Smets and uh, Goddard, too. That everybody who came here today came to play, only missing one or two questions each. And that's just what it comes down to. When you get the people who know the absolute most about these franchises, it really just comes down to those last things. So I think I got lucky that Damon also missed that Edoras Banner one. And uh, yeah, I'm super honored to have been here to play. And also props to the rest of the guys who came out as well. Yeah, Robert, I have a uh, I have a comment and then a question. The comment is you're allowed to sit down if you need to. And the, oh. the, the question is, um, can you compare what you just went through to anything you've ever seen or heard of in any other sporting event, including all the fan matches and schmodowns you've been a part of? Is there is there anything that comes close to what you just went through? I, I played a Middle Earth exhibition match in the fan leagues, but it wasn't like this. It was 1v1, and it w wasn't nearly as close. It was and over at the end of round three, but this was, I mean, it felt like 80 questions of sudden death. You'll have to correct me on that one, but uh, no, no, nothing that I've ever been a part of, for sure. It's uh, It was pretty nuts. I mean, look, you know, the thing was that you, you got, you took out the, dun you took out the IG champ, who is the, uh, you know, your dungeon mate. Ben Goddard put up a really f good fight there, but Alex Damon, I think, really is the big story here where 
it I think that the only maybe negative here for Damon is that he just showed his cards in an inner geek to match. Like if you're playing him in inner geek, then you, you know you want to get away from Lord of the Rings when you're when you're playing him. Yep. But he knows yeah. He, 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 I mean, that might be the thing that he might know all things as well as he knows yeah. Lord of the Rings. It's a, yeah. it, it's a, it's a tough call. I mean, if, if I was playing Robert or Alex or I'll say Smets or Ben for that matter, I, regardless of what we're playing them in, Christian, I am scared of all four of them. Me too. And speaking of which, I'm going to bring back both Alex Damon, Smasher, oh, and the gentlemen. Hell of a, hell of a match here. You guys just first of all, let me ask you guys uh, that were watching both Bandit and Smash or start with you, Smash. You know what what Robert Parker is capable, of, obviously. Uh, but how about the demon there and watching that match going 40? It, it was somewhat 40 points, I think, or whatever it was 41 points. What a match it was. What do you think of the overall end uh, end battle there? Yeah, I mean, uh, you could see if I was in the saw the small window, I was hopping up and down like that was a that was excellent. That was a great that was a gr great finale, honestly. Like, I mean, I knew I was really bummed. Look, I went multiple choice early. I, that knocked me out, regardless whether I got the five or not. And I, afterwards, I realized you can't go multiple choice and go perfect against these guys. So my my game was kind of already lost. And then I just have this image, by the way, of the and I know it's the magic box. So anybody could have got. I'm not qu complaining about the question because it was a great question. But like, I have this image of like the question writers on the screen counting how many people are sitting at that uh at the council of elrond so i mean when i was eliminated i was really bummed to not be involved in that overtime because uh i think bandit could probably agree because i saw how good he played we were probably playing along right with him so it was it was fantastic you saw us we were just jumping up and down and you guys are you know spider i already know you we, we already you know run drills all the time i knew it but uh, Alex Damon, man, much props to you. You know, uh, I'm hanging on to this as long as I can, but you guys are definitely obviously on my radar. And that goes for even you, the bandit, man. Come on, put your, get your feet in the IG yeah. someday. Well, I've been yeah. waiting, and this was this was a fun, like, uh, especially playing against y'all. Like, this is the way to kind of, like, get introduced because, like, Robert is an absolute terror. And, Alex, I feel like you might forget your name sometimes because I don't know how you pack in all the Star Wars lore and now all the Middle Earth lore as well. <laughs> But yeah, just like I knew a casting question, I knew that was going to be my downfall because like I love all the in movie type stuff. I knew the casting question was going to get me missed it by one name and all those overtime questions. Like I was like, I was so mad. I was like, I got to know this too. But that was <laughs> yeah. and it's great. I was like, oh, cool. I made it to the, the five pointer. It's 20 points. Great. The final score was 40 to 41. So <laughs> it looks like I, we, me and Smets got blown out of the water. when we missed <laughs> one question. That's well, crazy. So it was a hell of a match in Damon. So. Look, I mean, obviously you've heard everything about this kid, Robert Parker. He crashed your, he crashed the stage after you won. He had a nice, uh, he had a nice match against uh, uh, Andres Cabrera. So going up against this kid, the the real deal, or have to see what what, what the, you know what the league has in store for him. This is what I expected. That's just what I heard about him. That uh, Lord of the Rings is to Parker as Star Wars is to me. So uh, I, I knew I was in for a fight. Um, I can't say I'm upset with my performance, though. I mean, no that was a, a tough question at the end. Like, I mean, I've said it a ton of times before, so I don't mind saying it again. Quotes are rough for me. I fought my way through that round, too. That was the one I wanted the least, and I still did all right. So yeah, uh, I, I'm just happy people know I have layers. It's, <laughs> it's well, more than just Star Wars. You absolutely do. And, you, you know, do. You have, there's so much. I think that this proves, too, with both you, Parker, smasher and the bandit really fighting uh tough there but hey spider if we could get the crusher is that something you'd want to see for your first uh, exhibition uh defense there absolutely absolutely 100 percent. no no doubt in my mind i would absolutely want to play rachel and she is absolutely one of the best if not the best in the lord of the rings that we've seen in the showdown so i would absolutely want to play her any day of the week you have enough right. questions do you have enough questions for that? You might, yeah, have, to, right. you might have to buy Star uh, Lord of the Rings Trivial Pursuit for that. I know, and even though Ellis said it before, we got to give props to our um, to they our. Did great. They did really great. Absolutely, absolutely. The questions were so good. Remember, wait for the Amazon series for the next match. Much, sure. Well, remember though, the thing is with exhibition is that match that these these a lot of these questions could pop up in regular matches too. So it's it's exhibition and exhibition questions, they don't really count. So, all right, guys. Well, I'd like to thank. Everybody here thanking the demon, the spider, the smasher, and the bandit. Guys, I'm going to drop you off here. Thank you for joining us. Really appreciate it. As we wrap things up here, Mark, um, a hell of a battle there. Robert Parker taking the big victory.
Yeah, I mean, Christian, I'm looking in in the private chat that we have here with our producers and tech team, and I'm I'm seeing things like "Wow, yikes!" and then our own nerd chronic, uh, the great Eric, is saying that I think that this exceeded Cushing versus Canopic, and I might have to agree with him just because of it, it's such a limited window of knowledge that you have to have, but it's yeah. it, it's such a long window. You, you have to know so much about this stuff, and you know, you and I, when we were reviewing these prequel movies, we were complaining that maybe Peter Jackson tried to cram too much into three minutes. I, I wish that he had done five hours for each movie just to give us more to draw from for the next match. Right. Well, I mean, look, this was something they it definitely, it, it was built up to be the guy, the, the guys who know the most about Lord of the Rings in the division. And it certainly seemed that that was the case. I think that there are some other competitors out there that could hang, whether it is a, a, a Mara Kanopic or a Rachel Cushing or Dan Merle, if you will, uh, the Barbarian. There are people out there that could challenge Parker, but that kid is for real, man. It's good to have him in the league. Good to have all these guys in the league. And my friend, good to have you once again. This is another great exhibition match. Happy to have you all here. Happy to have you as part of the tier. So, guys, thank you. Stay at this at this tier and the $10 tier and up. You're going to keep getting these great exhibition matches. For Mark Ellis, I'm Christian Harloff. See you next time.